to Chase Hampton joining us right now uh, from the Somerset Patriots, uh, Yanks Double A, as we told everyone at the top of the show, we're here now. Chase, nice to meet thanks you. for coming on, yeah, man. No Great problem, to man. see you. This is awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, tell Kratzy, what do you got? What's the workout plan for the lower half? Uh, honestly, I grew up a uh, big free weight guy. So, I mean, just straight squats and deadlifts. That's basically all I did growing up. And that was just, it just happened to be, I just built up muscle over time doing that all the time now he's throwing a hunch off the mound <laughs> i wish not not okay <laughs> i figure that's what has to happen with the yankees pitching development camp and everything mm -hmm. we'll get you on the screen here soon yeah. so the ladies can see the mustache because <laughs> the mustache is going to sell it for it's prime it <laughs> is prime yes it is definitely prime but what what is it like going from being drafted and now all of a sudden you're in double a tell us what that journey like it's not even a journey it's like a it's like a car ride. It's like an Uber ride here that you took to double A. <laughs> Honestly, it was a dream. Uh, I mean, I would have never thought I got here so quick. Um, I think, honestly, it was just uh, me putting my head, my head down and just working as hard as I can to try to get anywhere as fast as possible and just taking whatever they give me and just being a sponge and using everything that they give me and just taking it out there on the, on the mound. Do you, feel like, do you feel like that can be a, a hindrance where, like, you might get a bad coach and he might tell you the wrong thing? Or do you feel like you're smart enough to filter out the bad and just take in the good? Uh, I'm very smart to filter out the bad and, and take in the good. Uh, there's, been a, there's been a ton of coaches I've had over the years that just given me some, like, bad advice. And then I take the good stuff that they give me and, and then use it uh, along the way. And then, uh, of course, here we have tons of good coaches. We have Preston Claiborne, uh, Sam Brand, uh Grayson Crawford here that's with us here. Um, and those three people just alone have helped me become the pitcher I am today. So, Now, do you feel like when you get drafted, when you hear your name and it's the Yankees, are you like, holy cow, like, this is like, look at all the pitchers that they've developed, let alone not even the, like, prestige of being a Yankee. Right. Yeah, it was it was actually the – I felt like it was like the holy grail of the draft. You know, <laughs> honestly, it was like, you know, the, the Yankees are such a – a big market team, you know, a very uh, high powered team. And they, you know, they develop guys really well. Uh, I mean, it, it goes to show they have plenty of guys that they've drafted and they're, they're in the league for other teams or they're even with our team as well. Um, so I, I think, it, I mean, as soon as I got drafted, I was ready to rock. I was ready to go. Who was your team growing up? You're going to hate me, but I was a Dodgers fan. I'm not going to hate you. Not me. Yeah. <laughs> He's in the media, so he yeah, doesn't I'm, really – Wait, I'm, I'm in the like media a, now too. Exactly. So. You are too. And uh, AJ, you're fine with that. I couldn't care less about it. <laughs> <laughs> you root, you, listen, you root for you. You root for. I mean, Absolutely. You did, he, didn't you grow up in Texas though? I know. That's what I was going to ask. That doesn't make any sense. Shouldn't you be a Rangers or an Astros fan? So growing up, I was a Rangers fan, but partially, like kind of half. Uh, you know, that were you a big fan? Growing up. Chase, were you a big fan in like 2013-ish? Yeah, of the yes, Rangers. Sir. Stop. Oh. Stop. Yes, sir. I was like uh, you had... Michael Young, Elvis Andrews, uh, AJ. Don't don't say AJ Prusinski. Don't, don't. <laughs> AJ Prusinski. <laughs> he had my jersey. It's okay. <laughs> he did not. He did my, not. My jersey. Yeah. Well, I mean, I had a I had a great time like growing up watching y'all play. Um, I remember you know just just going and watching uh like Elvis or El, Elvis Andrews, Adrian Beltre, just kind of like their relationship having like on the field. And, uh, I've always loved that that kind of relationship with those kind of guys, and uh, I just love watching them, them play, just, just compete and being themselves on the field. Now, on the field, our, for our fan base that hasn't seen you pitch, say, what's your style in terms of, like, your emotions? Are you a, a fist pump guy when you get a big K? Yes. I, yeah? I'm a, I'm a big emotional guy. Okay. Uh, I, I love the fire. I'm very fiery. Uh, uh, I I, I just I just like showing the emotion. I think it, I think it draws in a good crowd. I feel like, and it just kind of brings the excitement to the game, you know. And honestly, I don't want to put on a front that I'm kind of be like trying to be like a robot, a robot out there on the mound. I want to be myself and just kind of just throw. And that's that's where I feel the most comfortable at, and that's how I feel the best. By the way, what do you got on on your hat there? Is that a uh, puppy? And that is a puppy. Uh, it is a company back home. Uh -huh. uh, it is called Back Down South. Uh, it's one of me and my best friends. Uh, favorite company or not would say favorite company but we just really like their hats yeah uh they have good stuff good uh good hunting gear as well um so i'll try to figure out you know if i get a little shout out today yeah sure do it What's absolutely uh, back, de back, back down south they're in Lindell, back down Texas. South. i, I gonna, like the logo i was gonna you. say it looks like a puppy with like a with like uh, a hound dog that is a i want to say is a lab okay and, it's got a and it's got a duck in its mouth yeah so. oh there you go <laughs> duck 
hunting <laughs> is real. So is this what you're doing? Is this what you're doing in the offseason besides – Legs and deadlifting <laughs> and getting your mental mindset. Uh, yeah, I, honestly, I haven't really been. It's kind of kind of crazy. I don't really go duck hunting as uh, as often. Uh, but this this off season, I'm going to be really putting my foot down and going as much as possible, as much as I can. So uh, just because I, I want to get out and explore and do things differently, as far as just straight baseball, mm-hmm. you know, actually get to experience some things. That's, That's you, smart. AJ. You're the specialist down there. Come on, Thanks. I'll bring it. Well, I can't really take him turkey hunting. He's in Tampa, not in Orlando. So <laughs> I get him in Osceola Turkey. We we got hunting down here in Florida, Scott. One day you'll go. You know, we'll, I'll get you out there one day, Scott, in the camo gear. Take you out there, shoot you maybe a little piggy. I there's see there's it. bugs. He doesn't like bugs. <laughs> That's not true. He doesn't like see, bugs. T- tell him, no, Chase. You my only take- thing, my only thing that that AJ will give me shit for sometimes because I'm down there with him most of the time is is gators. They yeah, they, yeah. they treat gators like they're just pets or something, like walking around like, oh, hey, what's up? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Apparently, oh, I heard a story actually from one of my pitching coaches, Ben Buck. Apparently, you can just pick up a gator off no. the side of the road no. and you can you can sell it. Don't like, do you can, no, 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 AJ. I tell you what, Chase, try that. Selling it. Chase, try that and, let, and call me no. 10 years later from when you get out of jail. <laughs> so go ahead and try it. If because, he has hands, do not do no, that. Do not do that. Yeah, do not try that at home. And do not you are not allowed to touch them. I mean, because you will go like Monopoly, you will go to jail directly to jail, do not pass go, do not collect two hundred dollars. Your ass is in the slammer right away. <laughs> so just get used to it. Because do not try that. Now, can't you see Chase? You just met Scott, but I've known Scott for a while now. Can't you just see him? Because you know when you, you shoot something hunting for the first time and you gotta put the blood on your face, Scott. Mm-hmm. So can't I can just see Scott shooting like a little piglet. And then he has to walk over and put the blood on it. It'll ruin his, like, makeup and his perfect beard. And he'll be like, oh, no, how fast can I get this off? <laughs> Dude, you're ta- you're, you need to treat me like a little bit of royalty right now, okay? Like, Oh, that, he is. I, oh, I was, true. You were the Dizzy Bat this, champion. This, what? You didn't drink the blood? He hasn't gone yet. I haven't gone, but I'm saying, yet. so I worked here. This was my first baseball job back okay. in the day. So Before I was you were born. The, okay. the on-field host. <laughs> well, for you. So, so on a day where you're not throwing – um, what's going on in between innings? Because the minor leagues does it. In my in my opinion, they do it better than the big leagues because they keep people entertained much more in between, right? Like the major league game, you know, you have your conversations and there's some things going on, but like the minor leagues takes it seriously. Like mm-hmm. most, many minor league clubs and the Patriots did this back when I was working there would be like, yo, between innings is serious. We want to yeah. keep people involved. We want to reward them. Like we want to do games, the whole deal. So have you observed what's going on here sometimes? All the time. Uh, I think my favorite game is the uh, the chipping game that they have here. Uh, they, just, they put, a, they put a, a little flag out there and there's some balls, and you'll have some guys out there that try to you know, try out the chip. And I wish I could go out there and just show them off. And see how, you know, they probably would let you one time. No? I don't think so. No? I don't know. No, not, the... not during a game. That might right, be a right. breach of contract. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He <laughs> might go from prospect <laughs> to suspect games. real quick. <laughs> you might have to. Chipping, I mean, that might be. Get out there. They might have it today. You never know. We'll have to ask the people from behind. We've got a guy. Case, case, if you ain't pitching, dude, they'll let you do that. It's like three swings. I mean, it's a chip. It's not like it's a long drive contest where you're letting it eat. I mean, come on. Even the Yankees will let you do that. I I would would win in the long drive competition. Yeah? Oh. Uh, So so I would say, I mean, every – and we have like ten hosts – you know, player hosts on, on this show, they're all obsessed. They are all yeah. hooked. Are you guys like, if you get an off day, you guys every hitting time. some, some links around here. Yeah. Every time, every Monday, okay. any, any Monday that we have uh, available, we will go. Yeah. Uh, we even try to actually go on uh, today. Me and my roommate drew, drew Thorpe. Um, I had a call this morning and he, we were both super tired. We didn't want to go this morning, but we were going to end up going this morning. To go, but, there you um, go. Yeah, Who we, wins? Uh, usually Matt Sauer. If y'all know who that is, uh, he is one of the pitchers in the rotation here. He's the best golfer on the team. Uh, oh yeah, without a doubt, hands down. Uh, he just he's a scratch. He knows what he knows what he's doing. He knows how to put the ball in the, in the hole and knows how to put the ball in the green. No, I'm not even a scratch <laughs> mini golfer, but I love playing. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> hey, so um, when you grew up, and so you had Texas baseball, and you said you were a Dodger fan. Is there a pitcher that? That you, I, I split it up into two questions that you really like to watch, and then also there a picture where you were like, I'm going to pick up a thing or two from him because you grew up also like in the YouTube era where mm-hmm. you can very easily access all kinds of video. Right. Yeah. So uh, I would say my favorite pitcher of all time is Clayton Kershaw. Uh, he grew up in Highland Park, and uh, I was able to like kind of watch him, you know, growing up, just see him on TV and stuff. 
Uh, and I, I just really love the way he threw, like, spread through the ball. You know, even though he's on the left side, it's really different for me because I'm a right-hander. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just I just really fell in love with the way he threw his curveball and how he had so much confidence in everything he threw. And I kind of took that and displayed it into my game. It was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw my curveball with confidence as well. And that's the reason why I have such a good curveball here is I just use it and I have so much confidence in it. And it's, it's just been working. You know, and his curveball super unique, mm-hmm. right? How, how come more guys – can't throw it like that like how difficult is it to throw that like it's big a, lobby curve it's a special pitch for him i think it's just the way he throws it it's like his special way of him throwing it is the same way um trevor bauer throws his spike curveball that's the reason that's how i throw my curveball is the same way as trevor bauer uh i kind of take things from clayton kershaw said and some things that um trevor bauer has said over time and kind of just blended the two and i use it just like that uh, AJ, did you ever catch anyone that, that tried to do a, a Clayton curveball? Or really the, like, kind of double, what would you call it, in the motion? Because he kind of stops and – Oh, his hesitation? Starts, yeah, a couple times there. He's, he's unique. It's he's so unique. unique. He's, he's, yeah. unique. he's a one-of-a-kind. I don't and know if you've is. ever seen anybody. Because that motion, you can't – you don't go to a young kid like Chase and say, Chase, I want you to throw like Clayton Kershaw. Because he'll be like, I fell over six times, this pause <laughs> and this pause and – he almost hits. I don't know how he doesn't hit a spike with his front cleat. It's yeah, so he like close. rides the mound perfectly mm-hmm. as he goes down. It really is amazing. I mean, you know, you've, you like you Darvish and some of the Japanese guys. They kind of do the double leg kick. They come up and do it. But I've never seen anybody with as many pauses and as many things that have to line up. But I mean, Clayton is just one of a kind, and and I don't know that we'll ever see anything like that again. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Chase, what's the coolest encounter you've had on the mound? Like, have you faced either? like a big prospect you were excited to face or a dude coming up from a rehab assignment where you were like, oh, you know, I punched out this big leaguer yet? I would have to say that I think the biggest one I've, I'll probably face is uh, uh, Jackson Holiday. Uh, oh, that's nice. probably the only one. I faced him in high six times in high and then three times up here. Uh, he got the best of me over here. He had like, I think, two doubles off me. Uh, but I, I, I really like his approach. Uh, I think he's very young and he's very advanced for his age. And he just knows how to, you know, hit. He's a really great hitter, and he can play defense as well. They were making fun of me showing pictures of when I was the host here in Somerset. Jackson Holiday's got, got <laughs> just can as much show, of a baby face as I had back we show, in Somerset Can we show days. Chase your pictures? Can we show at least one of your pictures? We can. I don't care. Yeah. You can do whatever so that, you want. It's just more a matter of if they need, have them ready to, to queue up. They'll, you know? need, they'll need some time to queue those up. But if they can queue those up, it's – it's my guy down there, like leading the dizzy bat race and singing happy birthday there and you everything. Go. Look <laughs> at this guy. Is. Oh, I mean, was that Mardi Gras night? What that was, was that? definitely, <laughs> you were throwing like, beads wow. out. I got the beads. I mean, just yeah, cargo S- shorts, yeah. sneaky Jack, too. Cargo shorts. Oh, dude, I was that's, I, we, that's... the one thing I did play high school hoops. He I played was a little bit hoops. of a bully. I, I think everybody played high school. Hoops. AJ gives, <laughs> yeah, AJ gives him a hard time because he's yeah, never but it's played. not. I, I, I and he's I know how to he's, play he's deflecting it right now. Okay, so he's, he's trying to like look, Chase. It's a prospect. All this stuff, rehab. So you guys have had some rehab guys here. Mm-hmm. Okay, who has bought the best spread? Oh, uh, it's a big Kratz question. Oh, that's tough. Because we always we always ask these guys what you're thinking about. We always ask these guys. I actually ask. I'm pretty much telling the guys they have to come up with a big spread. And while you're thinking about it, my thing is the team pays for your food. Right. So you don't need the big leaguers to pay for your food. What if the big leaguers were, like, giving you some Jordans or some, like, (laughs) AirPods? Because they're spending about the same amount of money. Like, you would much rather use the Yankees' food Uh and – a new pair, a new, new pair of Jays. He's that been trying to talk all the big leaguers into this all year. I think you've some of them are at least one of them into it. They're they're thinking about it. Yeah, they're on board. Bringing with a me. gift. I, uh, me personally, I, I'm okay with food. Uh, <laughs> I, I love food. All, like, that's exactly what I want uh, from a big leaguer, honestly, because they give us good food. I'd probably say the best one that we've had, probably Rendon. Carlos Rendon. He gave us. I want to say a steak. Rodon. Rodon. Brenda, yeah, you got Brenda. it. Brenda, that's okay. Yeah, one of the two. When you get there, you'll be like, hey, what's up? <laughs> we're, we're Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, but what do you do? What do you do? Because there's good food around here. This is yeah, not like – there are some other minor league cities oh. where it can get challenging. Mm-hmm. It's a long car ride for somebody that's helping someone out to <laughs> yeah. find a legit steakhouse. There, I mean, there's a really good one right down the street here. So yeah. what did he buy you? Uh, I want to say it was a steak. Uh, I don't exactly know where it was from. Okay, it was decent. Wolfgang's it was, it probably. Wasn't no. too bad down the street. Um, but I mean, it was it was definitely better than what we've had. 
Now, based on your numbers, you're going to be in the big leagues soon. So you need to learn <laughs> that you can't kill spread. Is there a spread killer in your clubhouse that took two stakes, one for his girlfriend at home and one for him there? I don't know if there, if we have a spread killer here, but because uh, I haven't really noticed that. Honestly, okay. I haven't really taken notice of that. I'll probably start looking. You need to start that. looking. Somebody, to somebody's see. taking to-go boxes. And some dudes have gotten called up recently. So, I, I mean, I know a lot of Yankee fans want to know what's, what's Jason Dominguez like. Both what did you see from him on the field and what's he like as a person? Because obviously he just got called up to the next level and hopefully will be in the big soon. And he's one of the better prospects out there. Yeah, I think it was a great, uh, great human. Great, a great person. He always wanted to talk to you. Uh, especially when I first showed up here, he he uh, he introduced himself as Jason. You know, didn't didn't try to act too hard or uh, you know like he was like a big name or anything. He yeah. wanted, he wanted to actually know me and, and get to talk to me. And um, I, I really enjoyed his time being here. And especially defensively, he was amazing. And, and of course, offensively, he was great as well. Hits the ball pretty hard. Yes, very hard. <laughs> very hard. <laughs> what what is is there anything you notice like something that he likes like. I don't know. Did he have a phrase or like if he's hanging in the clubhouse before the game? Was there is there anything like unique about him? I, I never really got to hang out with him on that aspect. Yeah, because uh, I'm a pitcher. Uh, so I was just hanging out with most of the pitchers. But um, he, he he liked to be around the guys. He, he would he would like to interact with us. You know, he wouldn't just like be standoffish. And, you know, he's he's a Latin. You know how most Latins are. They kind of just want to be about themselves. And he's he's speaking. Um, does he speak? fluent english mm -hmm. yeah 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 he, he's he's really good he, he i know exactly what he's gonna say yep uh and he, he just he likes to talk to us it was fun I enjoyed cool. it. since you're new to pro ball and you hear a guy like you hear of a guy before you get to pro ball like the big guys mm -hmm. like are you like uh eh, you know what i just see him as my equal because we're essentially the same age we're essentially but you took two drastically different routes to get here what does that mean for you as far as like how you interact with those kinds of guys? I, I just try to find uh, something like that we can bond over. Uh, like uh, Yandres Gomez, we kind of just talk about our bullpens together. We kind of just talk about how, how our bullpens went, like what we were working on. It's kind of those things just to, just to get some kind of communication in there and kind of get to know some of these guys and kind of like take some things from them as well because, you know, they're from a different background and they might they might see things differently as, as I see things. So um, th there's that stuff. Uh, and I think just kind of just getting to talk to them more and just getting to know them really is just probably the best, best thing. Mm -hmm. And what about what about the area here? So, I mean, we don't need the exact address, but like uh, what do you think of the area, the fan base? You know, I mean, these are these are my people. <laughs> uh, so be careful but it's definitely new for me uh, yeah i was born and raised in Kilburn, texas so it's a small town uh very hot all the time except for except for in the winter mm -hmm. so being up here it's very it's a, a different definitely a different scene for me it's a, just different people just different area and stuff uh but I've, I've grown it's grown on me i enjoy it i really like being up here it's a great spot uh, the weather's nice i mean it's 75 degrees today it's a great day to play baseball uh, I, it's starting to grow on me. I really enjoy it. Nice. So as you, like, the end of the season in the minor leagues, most likely you won't get called up. Sorry to break that to you. <laughs> I didn't talk to Cash about that, but maybe he has different plans. But <laughs> at the end of the minor league season, you're sitting here and you're like, okay, what do I got to do for next year? What do I have to – did I do enough during the season? Do you feel like you put yourself in a position as a new draft pick, coming in here, doing what you need to do? What would be – what will be a positive place to start for you next year? Big league camp, triple A, back here. Would you be disappointed if you're back in double A? Honestly, I would not be disappointed if I'm back in double A because, you know, you got to you got to take your own road. Um, but, uh, I mean, for me, my biggest goal is to be in big league camp uh, next year for spring training. That's that's the main goal. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, my goal this year was to at least get to double A. Uh, it, whether that was early, whether that was at the end of the year, it really didn't matter for me. Uh, but I think I think there's still a lot of things I have to work on. I'm still pretty unpolished. I still got to work on a lot of things pitching wise. So I really wouldn't be too upset if I was if I was here in Double A. I would just know I would have to work really hard to to get where I was supposed to go. All right, I got two more for you, teammate questions. Number one, give me like a sleeper minor leaguer or prospect or someone, whether it's on Somerset or someone else you've you know played against or played with in the minor league system, though, with the Yanks, like someone we should keep an eye on and Yanks fans should keep an eye on where you're like, yo, this guy's got a lot of potential not being talked about enough yet. 
Ben Rice, 100%. Okay. Uh, I think Ben Rice is, a, is one of the greatest hitters I've ever seen. Wow. <laughs> I mean, he just There you breaks. go. He yeah. just breaks. He, he hits the ball very hard, and he, he plays the game with a lot of heart, and he does everything right. And just watching him by, behind the plate, I just have that. You ever just see a guy just think he's going to play for a long time? He just, he just, he has that look about him. He just kind of looks like a, a guy who will he'll play for a very long time. He just, he just knows the game. It hits the ball hard. What else? Like, is he adjusting to, you know, in, in between games, like game plan wise? Is he a great adjuster? Like, what to you makes him look like, all right, this is going to be a, a long time big leaguer for the he, Yanks? He, he makes the adjustments. Yeah. He does. Uh, I mean, before the walk off, I mean, he, uh, you know, he had a, he had the great mindset of just going in there and not trying to do too much. He got bases loaded, just trying to put the ball in play, get you know tie, uh, tie the game up, and you know just happen to put the bat on the ball. He has enough juice to put it out of here. So uh, he's he's just a great hitter all around. He just has a great great mindset. Perfect. I'm glad you mentioned him because my other question was just going to be from one of your teammates because we're going to talk to some of them later on. Something we should ask them. So let's just let's just bring it to the the Ben Rice conversation. We'll talk to Ben later. What's one thing we should ask him? Whether it's like a funny story or Something that'll get him excited uh, or get him get the motor going. Ask him. Ask him about the uh, the uh, the Wii golf games with Bailey D's. Okay. Ask him about those. Those That's those perfect. those are intense on the on the road series for those for those two. They bring a, a a Wii and they they just go at it every day on the Wii golf. That's awesome. Wii golf. <laughs> That's awesome. Need that. Need Wii games in my life. Are you a video game guy? I do. Yeah, I play video yeah. games every day. Well, I wouldn't say every day. I, I usually I usually play just Fortnite with a couple of friends yep. before I go to bed. But uh, I mean, I, I usually just try to keep it very limited. That's it. When when people ask me, and obviously just covering players for a long for a long time now, but especially like the last five to seven years, and AJ, you've seen this. They're like, oh, what do guys what do guys do like? the number one thing I can always point to. I'm like, most of them are playing video games. I'm like, especially after the game, they're on the road, you know? Um, and that's actually even how some of the dudes will play against each other if they were teammates one place and then they kind of stay in touch through video games. So you see that, AJ, all the time. Yeah, guys used to go hang out at the hotel bar, grab beers and talk about games. Now they jump on video games and try to shoot each other in Fortnite. It's changed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. talk about the game while they're on, while they're on Fortnite mm. on the headsets. 100%. They were talking about, man, how'd you build that wall so fast? I couldn't even snipe you. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, how was your bullpen today? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Chase, we really appreciate yeah. you stopping by. Dude. Awesome, Great man. to meet you. Thank you, you so much. Um, good luck. Thank all you. right. And uh, hopefully we'll talk to you in the big soon, all right? Hopefully. We'll Cheers, you. man. Thank appreciate you. you. Awesome. And we can show that, that board one more time, too, with more info. There it is on, on Chase here in Somerset. Um, having quite the year. The K number's off the charts here right now too everywhere so. dude striking curve everybody ball. out what do you say he has a really nasty curveball yes. he has a really nasty curveball it's there you really go. nasty <laughs> appreciate you chase thank you great to meet you